The federal government has cleared the air over the recent increase in pump price of petrol, which has continued to receive condemnation nationwide. Minister of Information Lai Mohammed spoke to news media in Abuja, saying, with a loss of over 60% of the federal government's revenue due to COVID-19 pandemic, the government can no longer afford the subsidy regime. The minister condemned those seeking to make political gain from the crisis and said the federal government will do all it can to reduce the effect of the increased cost of petrol on the poorest of the poor Nigerians. Our correspondent, Amadine Uye, reports. The emergency press conference was called by the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva, and the Minister of Power, Sali Maman. It was supposed to clear the air on the recent increase in pump price of petroleum and increase in electricity tariff. The ministers all admitted that Nigeria's situation had become dire. Thus, the decision by government. If you have a situation, even privately, where you have lost 60% of your income, due to no fault of yours, strictly speaking, because in the whole world, nobody prepared for COVID-19. COVID-19 happened on us and immediately eroded demand for our product, our most important product, which is crude oil. Demand for crude oil completely dropped because most countries, all countries in the world, we are on lockdown at the same time. I mean, that is very easy for all of us to understand. The truth of the matter is that subsidizing fuel is no longer feasible, especially under the prevailing economic conditions in the country. The government simply can no longer afford for a subsidy. As revenues and foreign exchange earnings are falling by almost 60% due to the downturn in the fortunes of the oil sector. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, says he returned to the subsidy regime, which has gulped almost 1.5 trillion naira in the last three years, will be disastrous for the nation. Federal government is not unmindful of the pains associated with higher fuel prices at this time. That is why we will continue to seek ways to cushion the pains, especially for the most vulnerable Nigerians. With 60% less revenue today, we cannot afford the cost. The second danger is the potential return of fuel queues, which has thankfully become a thing of the past under this administration. The days in which Nigerians queue for hours and days just to buy petrol, often at very high prices, are gone for good. Of course, there is also no provision for first subsidy in the revised 2020 budget. The Minister of Information also cleared the air on estimated billing by electricity distribution companies and tariff increase by the federal government, saying not all Nigerians will be affected. Only customers with guaranteed the minimum of 12 hours of electricity per day can have their tariff adjusted. Those who get less than 12 hours supply will experience no increase. This is the largest group of customers. NARC will also strictly enforce the capping regulation to ensure that unmetered customers are not charged beyond the metered customers in the neighborhood. In other words, there will be no more estimated billings. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Amadine, for that report. We're now joined by Abubakar Mai Gandhi Dakangari, Vice President, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMEN. Also joining us is Kunle Wiseman Ajayi, human rights activist. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us um, on the breakfast. I will start with you quickly, uh, Mr. Dakangari. Oil marketers and Pangasin have called for the removal of subsidy um, in December. Won't the removal effect, affect rather the consumers and negatively impact on the economy? 
Okay, good morning. Good morning. Well, in fact, let me correct your impression. We independent petroleum marketers, we didn't call for the regulation. But since the deregulation has come, the government has found it necessary for the deregulation, and we too, we are ready for the regulation, the regulation because of the economy of the country. And uh, we normally, we purchase this product on cash and carry basis. And uh, definitely it will, we make sure that we discharge this product in our various petroleum filling station and sell to the masses. All right. Um, Mr. Wise Manager, uh, l let me ask you your reaction to federal government's position uh, that the removal of petrol subsidy will not be reversed. Uh, I think that is... Uh... It's an affront of the Nigerian people. It's an insult on the Nigerian people. Because the federal government in this first place uh, did not listen to the warnings of the civil society. Because if you deregulate the economy of a country, it's a simple thing. It means you do not want to regulate the oil economy of that country. What that means is that you are allowing the economy to be determined by a fake so-called demand and supply. In a situation where the country is under a global economic meltdown, the country is under a global healthcare crisis, I think that the federal government only wants to ask Nigerians, do you want to take your country or do you want to allow us to take you for a ride? So I think the federal government will face Nigerian masses on the streets if it feels it will continue to keep them in all of these problems that we are today. All right, let, let me come back to you, Mr. My Gandhi Da King Gary. Um, I want to ask you to be clear on your position. What is Ipman's position on federal government's removal of subsidy and their insistence that there will be no going back? Well, our position normally, we independent petroleum marketers, we are law abiding. And uh, we consider the way the federal government is thinking that it will affect their economy if they continue deregulizing the sector. Therefore, we really accepted. And since we have advised the government, before embarking on this deregulation, let them See, all our refineries in Nigeria are functioning properly. But nevertheless, since they have already gone to that, we, we are ready to support them and do our best to make sure that we sell this product at a lower rate to the masses. How is it going to affect or rather impact your um, group? Well, you know, Normally, actually, the regulation has advantage, and there are some disadvantages. Like now in Nigeria, as it was already being implemented, and we fully depend on importation. So that is the disadvantages that we are going to get, because the price will be a little bit higher. But if they allow the marketers to participate fully in construction of refineries in the country, like independent petroleum marketers, definitely the price will, in future, will a little bit become down in such a way that the masses can be able to purchase it at a lower rate. But presently, under this regulation, the price will be higher, higher, and higher depending on the rate of the crude oil. Um, I, I wanted to go back to uh, Mr. Jai, but I, I I'll stay with you on the question of um, high prices. You, you said earlier that um, Ipman will try to um, ensure the price is not too hard on the people. That's in a roundabout way. That's what you said. So with this increase in prices, how is Ipman going to help 
to ensure that not, the ordinary Nigerian is not overly burdened with this um, price that is on the high side? Well, in fact, presently, if you observe, you know, we independent marketers, we have the highest numbers of petroleum retail outlets nationwide in the whole of the country. But presently, if you observe, our price always is always below the price of the other marketers because we are together with these masses. We have masses concerned in our mind always. Okay, uh, let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Kunle Wiseman Ajayi. I, I want to talk to you about something that uh, TUC mentioned earlier. They talked about the fact that the federal government had promised they will, you know, fix about five refineries, but they are yet to, you know, live up to that promise. And now they're expecting Nigerians to understand uh, with some of the decisions that they are making when they, on their part, are not living up uh, to expectations when it comes to fixing the infrastructure and bringing sanity to the oil sector. What is your reaction uh, to that? And what is the feeling on the street? If you can uh, give us an insight. Yes, uh, first and foremost, uh, I want the Trade Union Congress to know that the federal government won't fix refineries. The reason being that the federal government has subscribed to the International Monitoring Fund and World Bank policies of neoliberalism. That is extreme marketization of a national economy. And what that means is that Nigerians will be left to suffer in the hands of crude capitalists within the country whose interest is majorly to get profit, profit, and profit. And that is why you find a situation today where the federal government decided that they were going to deregulate. And while they are deregulating, they are leaving Nigerians in the hands of exporting and marketing. Because what it means is that today there are no refineries in the country, and so we are dependent on our own crude oil, taken abroad and brought back to us. And even at the refineries that has been on board, Nigerians, no refineries will work, especially because Nigerians have been told to wait for private refineries from Dangote and the likes. And so today we know that on the streets, Nigerians are very clear that the federal government does not care about them. The federal government only cares about the interest of some marketers, the interest of some private profiteers. So there is no, there is no part of the world, there is no country in the world today where the citizens who own particular resources have been allowed, you get it, to be dealt with left, right, and center, you get it, by those who are even not entitled to such resources in Nigeria today. So because you have, you find a situation where the oil in Nigeria today is not owned by Nigerians. The oil is owned by multinationals. And after, instead of easing away the multinationals and the country taking over its own oil, his own nationalization, what we find out today is a gradual, complete destruction of the refineries and allowing Nigerians to suffer in the hands of those who want to maximize gain. Uh, so you say, on the so street, you... I can tell you today that Nigerians are massively angry. And as of this morning, we have a situation where students in the whole of Southwest are going to be marching all over the streets. The same people who are deregulating by force who are forcing Nigerians to pay very high for their own oil are the same people now who are putting so much money to force Nigerians not to say their mind. Which means that they are telling the Inspector General of Police this morning to arrest all students of Southwest in all parts of the states that are going to protest. And uh, we are then, then the how do we address this seeming this disconnect, uh, Mr. Ajayi? How do we address this seeming disconnect between the government and the people? Because on the one hand, uh, you say the citizens are unhappy with what the uh, decisions the government is saying. But the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, is quoted as saying that the federal government is not insensitive to the concerns of the people and that they're going to do all they can to cushion uh, the impact, but that the decision is not going to be rescinded. So how do you, the people are saying, rescinds this decision. They are saying that is not going to happen. So how do we meet at the middle point.
There is no, there is no middle point. The middle point is supposed to be action. See, Minister Lai Mohammed, we never, we never accede to the demands of the masses. He himself, he himself issued statements when the former government of President Goodluck Jonathan removed subsidy. He issued statements on behalf of the old ACN and chastised the former president for not being sensitive to what is happening to the streets. The same minister recently, when Nigerians say we do not want the social media bill, went through the bad door to the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission to say that we must gag Nigerians by the truth at all costs. We must make sure they do not talk. So generally, nobody on the streets of Nigeria takes Minister Lai Mohammed serious for any reason. Nobody takes him serious. So for us, we believe that he is saying everything from the minds of the Kabas in Aso Rock and the Kabas in uh, primitive accumulation rocks that are everywhere in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Wise Manager, I will come back to you on the aspect of looking for a solution. There must be a solution because if we don't find a middle ground, uh, what we will see will be chaos. So we'll come back to you. But I want to go to uh, Mr. Gandhi Dakingari. Um, I want to ask you, what actions will the federal government take that will help cushion uh, the impact of the decision they've taken on the citizens? Because they say they are going to do all they can. So what would be your suggestion as an organization to the federal government to do for that to happen? Okay, thank you very much. My own suggestion to the federal government on this issue that they have taken they should try as much as possible and make sure that our refineries are functioning. That is one. Then secondly, let them use this money that they, that they intended to pay for subsidy wisely so that the Nigerian will feel the impact of the regulation. That is to say, they should make sure that they didn't allow any issue of corruption to affect the money that they are generating through this deregulation. They should allow the masses to cushion their masses problems. Like maybe they should make sure that they constructed the hospital are in good conditions, schools, and uh, other services. Like they should try and see how they can develop the railways and uh, other heavy trucks, that is buses that can be able to convey people from various places. And uh, apart from that, there are some filling stations 20 kilometers away, which this, this before this subsidy has really affected them, which at the present now, the government has shut down all those filling stations because they are along the border side. So they should try as much as possible and see they open all these filling stations since the sector is already being deregulated so that the people will go back to their normal businesses. And this thing will assist the economy of our marketers. All right, so I'll come back to you now, uh, Mr. Wiseman Ajayi, just because I wanted you to just uh, think about it a little more. What is the way out of this? Because if the citizens are agitated, now they're saying that they want to go on protest, we're going to, or maybe at the end of the day, there's every likelihood think, uh, properties will be destroyed, people, I mean, livelihood will be affected, and then the situation we're trying to move away from, we seem to deliberately be pushing ourselves into it. What is the way forward in this situation now? I, I just listened to, to Ipman's position, and I can say that this is a position that we took prior January uprising in 2012 to say the federal government should build refineries to do this, to do that, to do a lot of that. But from 2012 till now, Nigerian masses have discovered that the masses do not matter anymore. The public do not matter to this kind of element that are in government. What matters to them is the money they get. You need to ask them when they say they are not subsidizing this, they are not subsidizing that. They have been subsidizing the heads of their friends. There are a lot of people who are in government today that are abroad. You need to ask them. Many Nigerian rulers, many Nigerian kabas today, even under the COVID-19, they have been importing 
hospitals to their homes. Many of them have been taken abroad. You have the case of Maman Daura who had been flown abroad. So we have a situation today that Nigerians cannot continue to ask for what they would not get because we know that this government has left whatever reforms. They are not ready to do any reforms whatsoever. And so what we are asking and we know is that something must give way. If Nigerians do not take to the streets, if Nigerians do not take action to tell the whole of this government to resign, because what this government has done effectively is what more of the Senegalese government is supposed to, that, that has done. Do you think, because do you the Senegalese think, government based knew on the that same antecedents that you are citing, do you those... think that taking to the streets will in any way impact the decision of the government? Because this will not be the first time the Nigerians are taking to the streets. At the end of the day, like you said yourself, some of the promises that were made was not addressed. So can't there be another way? instead of the protest and the disruption? Yes, let, uh, let me say this. It's just like uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Julian was saying the last time uh, about strikes. You see, when you have people who are consciously uh, are disabled to people's uh, uh, request, who are consciously blind and deaf, to what people want. So you listen there, journalists were asking Minister Lai Mohamed questions to say Nigerians are suffering. Reverse this your conscious position. Because what we need to know is that the government is lying, that they are not the one that cause it, that it is one commercial position on capitalism and all of that. It is the government that officially deregulated the economy under the coronavirus, under a pandemic economy. I think we've lost audio with uh, saying, Mr. Um, a wise manager. So we'll go we are back saying to... that okay. the federal government, the federal government cannot listen to people if they do not come to the streets. If they do not come to tell them, if you go to a boardroom, Minister Lai Mohamed will tell you the same thing he's telling journalists. So until we go through scientific ways, because a body will continue to be at rest, until a little bit of force is given to it. If we are on the streets, there will be balance of forces so that we can be able to tell the federal government this is what is to be done. Because right. what we are saying is that all these policies of deregulation, Naira devaluation, and all the rest should be immediately reversed. All right. Let, let's see what, the what whole happens. of those in government should resign. We Let's agree. see what happens in the coming days. Uh, we'll just um, take the final thought of uh, Mr. Abubakar, my Gandhi, that King Gary. Um, your final thoughts um, on this matter. Well, my, my final call, I heard he was talking about going to street. We, all what we need the people, the Nigerians, masses to do is let's go through dialogue. Because this issue is a very sensitive issue because when the federal government realized that they cannot be able to continue regularizing the sector because of the economy of the country. So let's try as much as possible and see and give the government a chance so that we advise them on the way forward. That is, if they can be able to see that our refineries, they are all in order, then our foreign investors can be allowed to come and compete in the business. I think in future line, it will affect the country. Because sincerely speaking, everybody knows there is a huge scandal in this subsidy regime. And we cannot be able to go like that. So the, the only thing, let's tell ourselves the real truth. But the only thing, what we are trying to say here, if the government provided that they can be able to use this money wisely and utilize it, it will be good and fine for Nigerian future. And we two marketers, I know it will become a very competitive business to us and which we are ready for it because okay. we have interest with the government. Therefore, we are ready to support the government to see that as much as possible, they achieve their aims and the objectives. All right, um, Mr. Kunle Wise Manager, um, your parting thoughts 
um, this conversation? Yes, I want to say that Nigerians should understand that uh, independent marketers, uh, petroleum marketers especially, are here to make money. And so they would always stand with government because government is officially trying to make money for them. We, the masses, we, the poor people, we, the civil society, we, the youths, we who do not have petrol stations and filling stations are saying that we are not even asking for subsidy because subsidy itself by this government had promised that they were not subsidizing anything. What we are asking for is renationalization of the oil industry return the oil industry to the working people of Nigeria, return the oil industry to a situation whereby it is the oil workers that will be handling the whole of the oil industry. Every other thing is an attack on the poor people, is an attack on the masses, is an attack on the situation where uh, they want Nigerians to keep suffering and smiling. And as right. it is today, we have coronavirus, we have a lot of attacks, we have a lot of uh, uh, natural uh, 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 resources in Nigeria that are being used against Nigerian masses. And All we cannot right, continue Mr. Wiseman, to, to allow this to happen to us. For us, in Nigerian people, Nigerian working people, Nigerian civil society, we will take action because... I need to ask, uh, uh, I need to tell uh, uh, Mr. We're, we're, uh, re we're really out of time, Mr. Wiseman Ajayi, but I must say thank you very much to both of you for sharing your time and your thoughts with us under breakfast. Do have a good day.